screen cam on the use of Wireshark. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to open a pre-canned demo and then explain what's inside there. Okay. I'm now going to go to a particular folder. So it's just like using any other software tool. And here I have many different capture files. I'm going to open FTP. Okay. We've now got all the frames loaded and you can see each of the frames here. Okay. And then we can expand them down here. Now these have been captured on a wireless network on a laptop using an appropriate driver. Therefore you're going to see a slight difference in the protocol stacking. We're seeing Ethernet 2 and 802.11. So we're seeing the stack for a wireless system. What we are interested in is having a look for the FTP traffic. Okay, FTP is on port 21. So one of our techniques might be to use a display filter. We're looking for TCP dot port being equivalent to, that's two equals, port 21. If I hit enter, <coughs> we have now filtered all the frames that have come into and out of this, this particular capture and we are only looking at FTP sessions. We can see at the very beginning here we have a frame that says SYN. That is a SYN packet start frame or synchronize. Okay, if I open this TCP up, look at the flags, SYN flag is set. The correct response to that is SYNAC. Okay, SYN and an acknowledgement. The following frame to that is an acknowledgement. That's the TCP three-way handshake. SYN, SYNAC, AC. The following frame is now a TCP session on the particular port in question. Okay, so we can see FTP, authorized connections only. Okay, so there's some sort of banner that's come back from this TCP uh, FTP server. If I look at the next frame, pure TCP. The next frame, user pass. So the command that was sent was user, and the argument that was passed was Richard. We now know the username that was entered into this system. If we look at the next frame, we see that we require a password for user Richard. Okay. If we look at the next frame, TCP only, and the next frame, pass find me slash r slash n. The command was pass, and the argument that's been passed back was find me. I think we know what the password was now. So we've just done a bit of diagnostics to determine exactly what was going on inside that FTP sequence. If we keep going down here, we find that the password was incorrect. Okay. We also find that this is FileZilla. We now got a little bit of enumeration. We know exactly what's inside those frames. Username Richard has been passed against. And this time, we need a password. Let's see if we get the right password. Password that's been passed back was CNT. Let's see if that one worked. It did. The following frame says the user is now logged on. What we're now going to get is some banners. Okay. Okay. Unix emulated by FileZilla. If it's emulated, it obviously means it's running on Windows. We can now see that we've got uh, an active IP address. We know the IP of our FTP server and our client. We have a port command being com executed. Some data. We have the list command being executed. Whenever you have the list command, we're going to get a response from this. Okay, so we're going to find out hopefully what a listing of all the files is. Keep going down. And we've quit no particular listing has come forward. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to highlight this first frame, frame 3, clear the filter, right mouse click and hit follow TCP stream. All that information that we just extracted has been, has been found for us and passed directly to us. As you see the list listed nothing, it must have been an empty, empty directory. Okay. 
So, so far, we've now seen quite a bit about uh, how Wireshark works. We've seen a little bit about display filters. Let's just dig into this TCP sequence and find out how these display filters have worked. IP.adra EQ 172.32.51 The IP address is equivalent to that address and IP address equivalent to a different address. So that's how we've actually identified the two endpoints of this, TC of this particular connection. And then we have TCP port equivalent to some high number, that's obviously the client, and tcp.port equivalent to 21. That's the server. So if we start building up with this language, with this logic, we can actually write our own display filters and analyze data. We've just analyzed FTP. Hope that's been useful.